All right, so at this point, I have to kind of apologize to you again. Here I am starting the full game of Final Fantasy 16, and I had a bit of an issue with the earlier episodes where I was trying to record a kind of live commentary using the PlayStation 5 sort of um, capture ability. But I don't have a good microphone for that. And it kept picking up the TV's audio. It didn't sound very good. You hear the sound of me pressing buttons on the controller. My cat kept wandering into the room. It was, it was um, a disaster. But I didn't have appropriate footage to, or save points or that. And I really didn't feel like starting the game over again. So I just sort of tried using the footage and that I already had. And the audio was fucked up. Now, by the time I started the full game... I decided to quit with the live commentary thing and just record the gameplay. Unfortunately, the capture settings on my PS5 were still set to record audio from the microphone, even though I was sure that I had shut that off. So for this episode and half of the next episode, you're going to hear um, some echoing in the audio thanks to the TV playing its audio and it getting picked up by the microphone on the dual or the dual sense controller so the audio is gonna suck here and I apologize for that halfway through the next episode is when I recognized that that was happening and I fixed it so I record the video on my PlayStation 5 I save it on a flash drive transfer it to my computer load it in the premiere and this is where I am putting in the audio commentary so <laughs> Yep. Not the best solution. But anyway, this was me importing the save game from the demo version into the PlayStation 5's um, full release of Final Fantasy 16. So, I am playing through the game blind, just in case you were wondering, and um, the demo was part, was like the first two hours of the full game. So it's not like this is a different release. I just played through the first two hours using the demo version, and now I am playing. It's not like a Metal Gear Solid Five situation where there are two different releases. Demo is just the first two hours of the game, and you can transfer the save over to the full game. And that's what's happening here. I'm playing through it blind, but keep in mind, since it's a pre-recording the gameplay footage and then me doing the commentary, I tend to be a little bit further ahead in the story. So although I'm playing blind, I do have a little bit of foreknowledge about what's coming. Not generally too much. And again, sorry for the audio here. As you saw, the Crusaders have sounded the retreat. Sound of the retreat. Then, we follow. then we follow. We're down a We're man, sergeant. sergeant. If we return if we with our Shiva's head, head, our fate, our will, fate be no will be no different, different from the Beasts. I'll, I'll take my chances with my blood. blood. At least then I might die fighting. fighting. After you After do, you do that, is. that is. I want you dying. Not today. Not today. It's settled. It's settled. No doubt. No doubt. Now, if you, now, don't, if mind, you don't mind, you have an we have an army to chase. To chase. So we jumped forward a few years again, and we're playing as Clive Rossfield, going by the name Wyvern. So at the end of the demo, he was taken prisoner by this empire that invaded and killed all of his people. 
why he would willingly go and just sort of... I guess it wasn't willing, but he's still, you know, doing something. I mean, he was enslaved, but you'd think that he would resist this a little bit more. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't quite understand how. But he's, he's become a soldier for the people that killed his family. Not really realizing it, probably, that... Or maybe he does realize it, that his mother was complicit in the entire thing. She may have arranged the whole thing. But she kept him around because he is a talented soldier. He is a um, he is a bearer, one of the people that can use magic. And you see he's got the tattoo on his face like the other bearers did. I didn't pay enough attention to see if it's the exact same tattoo. It probably is. But it just it shows that he's a slave. So he's been enslaved, but there must be some kind of a mind control aspect to this because he seems a little bit too complicit in what he's doing. Doesn't quite make a lot of sense to me why he's like, oh, we're here to assassinate somebody. Like, he seemed a little bit too honor bound and stuff as a kid to be doing this, you know? So, Titan is not the fight out of my life, friends. Where are the rest of them? That can't be the main host. She's a prisoner. Our fortunes have turned, Sergeant. <laughs> okay, that was just something I said while I was playing the game. Uh, it picked up by the microphone. I tried cutting all of that stuff out, but you know I'm missing a few things here and there. It's it's hard because there's only one audio track. Maybe there's a way of recording two audio tracks on the PlayStation Five. I just don't know it. Okay, so the the way that this story works is that you have these you have the different people that are capable of uh, using magic you have the dominance which are people like Joshua or Clive apparently and then you have the bearers the people who have the ability to cast magic but they can't turn into the big summon creatures now this girl is the one that they were sent here to assassinate and she's the dominant of Shiva and I think even though we're not there in the story yet I think it's pretty damn obvious that we're looking at Jill here the girl that was uh, with Clive and Joshua in the flashback scenes. Something that... Uh, oh, okay, okay, so she she fought Titan in the beginning of the demo, beginning of the game, and this is immediately after. So the, probably the reason why she's unable to turn into Shiva is because she um, she's basically worn out from that fight. So she's not... She's not um, able to do that, so but it turns out she's actually pretty good with the sword, and uh, and she can still cast magic. She just can't turn into Shiva, and she's outnumbered here, so she's definitely going down. It does seem like she's not like as willing, <laughs> like the guy who turned into Titan, whatever his name was, like willingly went out into the battlefield to do this. Jill here seems less willing because she's uh they had to hold a the hold a sword to a child's neck in order to convince her to fight on their side. 
you notice that there is this weird little like quick time event thing going on. I didn't realize it at the time, but the way that this game presents its easy mode is not by having like a menu option, but by giving you equipment which simplifies the battle mechanics to a degree. Now I was going through this game and I'm thinking, wow, this is so damn easy. And like I can dodge everything, I can just string together powerful attacks by tapping the square button. As it turns out, I was kind of cheating, I didn't realize it. So it'll be in the somewhere on the next next two episodes or so that I realize that and I take that equipment off to play the game the way it's meant to be played. Oh, Shiva defeated. That's not her name. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't know who she is yet. Clive doesn't know who she is yet, although he'll figure it out, but her name isn't Shiva, and you would have known that. Shiva was the creature, the, the summon that she turns into, not the girl herself. But, you know, nitpicking. So it really confuses me because he just sort of betrays, in a, in a way, kind of, betrays the people he's working for. So he's a slave to them and he's doing their bidding all the time, but then suddenly decides not to. He was sent there to kill Jill. He didn't know who she was, but he was still sent to kill somebody. And he just decides at this point not to. So if there is some kind of mind control aspect turning him into a slave, then how is he able to just sort of negate that here? I mean, what kind of loyalty can they expect out of a guy like this? Why would they trust him to be a soldier to go and do something as important as like an assassination mission? Settle down. It's done. Won't lost you again, Ivan. Take her head so we can be done with this. You would betray the Holy Empire? Betray? I don't recall ever pledging allegiance to your Emperor. My service may have been bought with this brand, but not my loyalty. I just fight to survive. You know, I don't consider that a good enough of an excuse to justify the way that he's acting here. The fact that he's like, oh well... Like, you put this brand on my face, and that's the reason why I'm your slave, but you never actually had my loyalty. It seems like you had enough loyalty to be a part of this. I mean, if you were... A... He was royalty before, and he was a, he was a bearer, so he, he, wasn't, he was treated better than most bearers were, or even regular citizens were. But he wasn't a slave before. But then he becomes a slave to the people who killed his family. And he must have been docile enough, or, or loyal enough, I should say, 
to be trusted with being a part of this military group sent to on such an important mission as to assassinate a dominant. So I don't I don't get how he got into this position, why he was complicit enough or or willing to go along with them enough to be trusted to this point and then suddenly betray them. Not because he was killing a potentially innocent person, but suddenly he turns on them because he knows the girl that he was sent there to kill. Of course, I uh, the story has to get to where it's going, but it just feels like a weak excuse. Maybe there's something else that will explain it a little bit later. Maybe there is some mind control stuff, but seeing Jill was enough to sort of break him of that. But, you know, we're going to have to play the game a little bit more to find out. Seems like Clive would have been somebody who so honor bound and duty bound and stuff that he would have been willing to die rather than submit to the people who killed his family. That's what I'm saying. Thank <laughs> you. 